Head into the crack house. 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 Welcome to Minisode 47. I am your host, Fritz, joined as always by co host Man Daddy. Hi. Angela. Hello. And Kaz. Hello. Uh, we actually are going to start with Kaz tonight. He's got something uh, very exciting that he would like to announce. Kaz, uh, are you going to. Own a house. Don't uh, do it. Don't do yeah, it. Yeah, I was going to say, probably not, honestly. Maybe houseboat. Probably. Oh, there my God. Go. Really? That's a good point. Like a houseboat guy? I could be, I could be a houseboat be really guy. really cool. Pretty soon all of our houses are going to be houseboats. Yeah, exactly. So it's probably. Probably. Ahead, getting ahead you of the curve. should probably invest in that. Yeah. Uh, so speaking of houseboats, I have a new short uh, mini-sode type of thing that, that I'm doing uh, where- I am reviewing uh, various UFO sightings. Ooh. Uh, reviewing them? Reviewing them, yeah. Uh, well, sort of like- <laughs> Thumbs up, thumbs down? Or... Exactly. Like, nah, <laughs> this dude, nah. And then, you know, we, we try to pick the best one. So there, there's no- uh, There wasn't there's no enough all music. Killer, no filler. Laggards in there. There wasn't yeah. enough music in this one. I didn't like it. The lights were lame. Exactly. Writing was kind of whack. Like, <laughs> derivative. Yeah. Saucer. Yeah. Um, if I see one more Venusian saucer- <laughs> but, uh, This is getting outplayed. So it's, what is it called? It's called uh, UFO Watch with Kaz. Oh, oh nice. nice. I was like, really? Name and the I title. I'm like, wow. Yeah, name and the title. Like, yes, place it up. So you have your name and a title of a show. That's oh, great. yeah. Yeah. Um, so who's, who's on it? Uh, well, starring uh, Kaz. Yeah. Okay. And then there's a co-star. Um, I UFOs. forgot his name. Uh, and then UFOs. Right. Those are the, the, the they're the, the feature is what we like to... Uh, in the radio biz, that's what we call that, the feature. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Too bad this is the radio biz. I'll write, I'll write that down. Okay. Uh, so <laughs> in, my, uh, in my perusing of the, uh, the, the world's UFO encounters, which w- we've talked about this on the show, if you want to check it out, it's on uh, 1041 Real Radio, iHeart Radio, Drop. media, podcasting, clicking thing where you can listen to stuff. WTKS FM. There you go. Uh, so... In that, in in the kind of research that we've been doing for that, I stumbled across a very uh, interesting article uh, with the help of my my co pilot on the show, Mr. Fritz. He runs the dials and the telescopes, etc. Who's that guy? There's actually uh, we talked about this um, off air. It was uh, the credence lent to the like ghost ghost hunters on like Travel Channel or Drew whatever. That. Yeah, exactly. Do that. And and somebody was like, "Oh man, what's happening?" And I was like, "You're never gonna see a fucking ghost." On the travel channel. You're never going to see aliens on fucking, you know, hit the history channel. If aliens happen, it's going to be on the fucking news. It's going to be on, like, your phone. It's going to pop up and say, hey, the aliens are here. Probably. Um, mm-hmm. So this is, a, this is where I was wrong. Uh, a man named Daryl Miklos is hosting a show called Cooper's Treasure on Discovery Channel. And it's a reality show. And it's based on searching for shipwrecks and other unusual items on Earth that a man named Gordon Cooper theorized uh, that um, based on his projections of uh, magnetic forces and, and different um, disruption currents around the world, that there would be specific areas where the, there would be more shipwrecks. And he did this as a NASA engineer oh, who cool. um, was tasked with uh, sort of providing additional information for like topography and stuff like that. As they were scanning sort of the earth, they wanted to understand more about what was happening, wind currents, magnetic things, et cetera. So he had these uh, these sensors put on on uh, observation uh, instruments, and they basically recorded that there are several large magnetic disturbances in in certain areas. One of the key ones, and he being, was doing this when he was in space, right? Correct. Like it was like a top secret thing, right? He uh, he was actually an astronaut, Na- uh, NASA astronaut Gordon Cooper, um, and he, based on his these ma- his magnetic maps of these things that he was tasked with with creating, a man the the man who is hosting Cooper's Treasure is finding these shipwrecks, these abundance of shipwrecks in these areas. One of the key ones being right over the what would be like an area in the sea where there's like a lot of shipwrecks. Triangle? Boom, Mariana's. Tri- yep. Yep. Uh, bah- <clears throat> bah- Bahumas Bahuma Trigger. Bahumas Trigger. Bahuma Trigger. Yeah, that's. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> right next to Tur- Turks and Caicos. Bahuma Tur- Tur- Trigger. Tur- Tur- Turks and the Caicos. Cooper. <laughs> Get your cigars from Cooper. What's <laughs> happening? <laughs> well, just please stop. <laughs> Done. So, um, in the Bahamas, uh, the Bermuda Triangle, right? It's. Uh, would you consider that the Bahamas? It's in the in, in yeah. the Caribbean. The Caribbean. Yeah, yeah Miami. Uh, the Bahamas are kind of out of the. Triangle, aren't they? They're kind of up there. Yeah. Yes. 
They're working uh, on it. But the Bermuda Triangle is uh, an area over water, right? So this is like a heavily traveled area that people say that weird stuff happens. The compass, they, you know, they, it's strange. It's difficult for navigators to get through that area. Uh, so during his filming of Cooper's Treasure on the Discovery Channel, uh, they had a submersible vehicle that was able to record things, and they found essentially what uh, Miklos believes is uh, an alien craft under the Bermuda Triangle. Um, and I'm going to quote here. <clears throat> it's almost like there are five arms coming out of a steep wall cliff, and each one of these is the size of a gun on a battleship. They're enormous, and there's five over here, five over there, 15 in total. They're identical formations in three different areas, and they don't look nature-made. They don't look man-made. They certainly don't look like anything I've ever experienced, and I have years of experience doing this. We've identified multiple different types of shipwreck material, and this doesn't match or look anything like that. Uh, ah. Miklos told the newspaper, uh, local newspaper, that the object appears to be covered in thick coral, which he believes is hundreds, if not thousands of years old. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. And also, in this area, right, the underwater, cur- it's like 300 feet below water, so you have to have this kind of, like, submersible because of the water pressure oh, yeah. well that's where that that current the jet stream yeah and it's so fast hits there so i can imagine years and years and thousands of years of hitting that continental shelf yep and then hitting up would absolutely cut some grooves in there that's the thing though yeah there shouldn't be any coral growing there in fact there's no coral growing there outside of this one structure oh he's th- i think they found her lay i think that's where cthulhu lies dreaming probably <laughs> I mean, it's about well, time. It's about time you showed up. It's warm waters. Should we wake Cthulhu or should we like... I wake? think we could use it. I really think we you could think use some, a cleansing. You think the like, world just could, across just the a, board. A good Cthulhuing? Is I, what let we me need? put it this way. I, I think Fa- Thanos was half right. Wait a minute. Okay. That is Jesus. like the exact area where like hurricanes come through. Yes, exactly. And Cthulhu is like, swipe right. Yeah. Yes. Swipe left. Well, because I mean, that's, Godzilla was actually a defender of Earth. And so who knows? Maybe we got Cthulhu wrong. You know, maybe he's actually here to defend us. We're just too much pussy to let him out. Let Cthulhu out, people. 2020. Me, Daryl, Darren Miklos, you heard us on uh, Cooper's Treasure. Let him out. Wake Cthulhu with your, with your Discovery Channel show and... Tell him you know me. Bring about the second coming of Cthulhu. Yes. Second that we know of. So, uh, <laughs> as, my, as my co-pilot to the skies, uh, <laughs> Fritz, uh, I understand you have a, a, another related mini... Yeah. Well, you know, uh, listeners of this show, and uh, especially mini-sodes, I like to start off with a current event. And so I figured this was right up his alley. But I mm-hmm. do have another UFO current event. Uh, a NASA astronaut has responded to a fan on Twitter about how he has seen some things in uh, in orbit. Oh. And his direct quote is something organic slash alien like in space. Ooh. So uh, the astronaut is Leland Melvin. And he fielded a question last week from uh, Scott Waring, who is uh, founder of the popular blog UFO Sightings Daily. He asked what his outlook about the existence of intelligent alien life living in our solar system is and whether the retired astronaut had ever witnessed a UFO. He did a 180 on him and responded, quote, I have not seen one in space or on the ground but thought I saw something organic slash alien like floating out of the payload bay. <coughs> and I called the ground to ask what it could be. And it was ice that had broken off of the Freon hoses, translucent curved organic looking and hmm. then alien emoji. So basically <laughs> he's kind of calling out a shot to NASA saying, look, I saw something organic and tendril, almost serpentine-like, outside of the payload window. You're going to say it's ice. Isn't there? Are there some Swamp other gas. videos of some weird stuff in the payload bays of, of the space shuttles? There's been, I think, a few videos of some uh, really bizarre stuff going on. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, one, one episode of the X-Files years ago, and uh, I was a, a, a zygote at the time when I was watching, but it was... How the this, fuck did you do that? It was this uh, Nephilim... <laughs> Which comes from like the Old Testament, this like large giant kind of like creature, and it was a shadow person basically. And we've had stories with shadow people, but on the International Space Station, there was a rumored report of a Nephilim, and uh, that report has never really surfaced. But it's something that is just kind of like well known. What was the guy's name in one of our many? It might have been the full episode. It was like Gary something. You did McClellan? it, Angela. Yeah, yeah McClellan. Like, oh, yeah. 
Ooh. Where the guy like straight up was like, no, there's aliens and we saw them in McClellan? the building. Clark McClellan? Clark. Clark McClellan. That sounds right. Yeah. yeah. So there you go. Uh, Leland Melvin says he saw alien life form and NASA saying nah. But totally nah. fielded a question on Twitter saying <clears throat> yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah. yeah, Leland. Get him. Like, yep. don't. Don't let the man sit on that shit. That's important stuff. We got to know. So bring the really heat. fascinating. Keep tweeting those alien emojis to like bring about the like ultimate truth. Yep. So there <laughs> yes. you go. So uh, I think that wraps up the alien uh, spectrum for about the next two months because that freaks a lot of people out. <laughs> Let's go over to you, Angela. What you got? I have been watching, uh, continuing to watch Sharp Objects on HBO, up. Ooh. which up is a show. totally messed up show. Um, that is the Amy Adams show. She, her character is a journalist who lives in St. Louis, St. Louis, Missouri. What did we decide? What is it Saint called? St. Louis. 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 So isn't there the movie Meet Me in St. Louis? Louis? Yeah. Louis? yeah. That always it's confuses got, me. Oh, wait, hold on. Uh, Wizard Screw of Oz. Screw you, Judy Garland. You've confused Judy me for life. Yeah, yeah. It's like and, New Orleans, New Orleans, all that. Yeah, yeah exactly. And that's where uh, Have Yourself a Merry, uh, Merry Little Christmas comes from. Really? Weird. Thank God we can finally see it. Thank you, again. 1950s. So, Amy Adams' character is a journalist in St. Louis, and she has to go home to Wind Gap, which I don't even know if it's a real place in Missouri. Sounds sounds like a place in Missouri. <laughs> sounds awesome. Um, that she's from, and there's been this trend of girls being killed in that town. Oh. And, um. It happens. You know, like. You get bored. You get bored. You're in Wind Gap. In when, wind it's gap. Like, when it's like 2018 and like what the teenagers do is like skating. Roller like skate everywhere. Roller skating everywhere. Yeah, it's like that drunk is a roller small skating. town. Join gangs. There you go. Well, that's what they're basically. They're a roller skating gang. Really? Oh, yeah. And it's a great show. And you're just sitting there wondering like. Yeah, it keeps you guessing like a mofo. Because everybody just seems like you doing with your life like what you seem like you would kill someone just out of complete boredom <laughs> just to see what it was like and they're all just so drunk and fucked up the whole time it is but you love watching it and i think there's just something because we are a central florida based podcast there is something about watching something based in the south yeah that's a little like oh I, I know all these people you get like, it. You every, get every, every life, character yeah. you're like i know who that is oh, yeah. i'm awesome. friends with that person i went you're to like, school oh, shit, with that's that person <laughs> <laughs> that's my mom like uh, you're like if that's you know, your mom i feel <laughs> sorry for you because she is a horrible horrible fucking person i hate the mom so bad I mean, no they're not oh that mom God. spoilers she's what <laughs> it's a terrible no, moms she, i'm like, already what is wrong with that mom there is something there's something up with that mom. Oh, there's like, something geez. way up with every so, character. There's something up. Yeah. What's what's up with the mom? She so is, uh, her family generations from that town. They owned the hog farm, which is basically, I believe, what you would think is the foundation of which that town kind of grew up around. Oh yeah, it's the foundation of the Midwest. That yeah, is the tell. industry of that town. Chicago was the like number one rendering city. Mmm, what a smell! But delicious. Hey, rendering. jobs. There you go. Big city. And so I don't even know what she does. She just basically just like faints and drinks all day. <laughs> and is mean. Like she, and is mean <laughs> and manipulative. And it's like if she does something like cuts her finger, it's like someone else's fault that she cut her finger oh, or yeah. something. Jesus. Look what you made me do. Like she's a mess. So <laughs> I've been continuing watching that. But I also saw a trailer for a movie called The Kindergarten Teacher okay. on Netflix. Go on. And... It's kind of interesting. I don't really know what it's about. It, it It's actually based on an, an Israeli movie that was made in 2014 by the same name. And the teacher is played by Maggie Gyllenhaal. Oh. She's a 40-something kindergarten teacher on Staten Island. She's a great actress. She gets gigs, too. Yeah, she, she does. does. She does. She's reliable, consistent. She's basically, there's there's just been nothing of her life. And she gets this kid in her class who is apparently this, like, poet prodigy. And she, like, is kind of becomes obsessed with him. And I don't think she even has kids of her own, but she realizes, like, that this kid has this gift and that his parents don't know anything about it and don't care, don't want to invest in it. And I think after all these years, her character is just so, like, I've done nothing and wants to do something and is, like, trying to push for this kid to do something and they don't want to do anything, so she ends up kidnapping him. Ooh, oh, no. That'll okay. go well. And I like it. So this is just a trailer. It's actually going to be airing on Netflix. And it's one like Sundance Film Festival's huh. awards. It's one of those indie films that 
has done really well and has been received really well. And apparently Maggie Gyllenhaal's performance is like one of her best. What is it called again? A kindergarten or the kindergarten teacher. The kindergarten teacher. Okay. And it's going to be on Netflix in 2000 or um, October 12th. Yeah. Yeah. And and that's going to be next year, but it's this year. It's in the same vein as Sharp Objects? I would say so. The Kind of that thriller. So it is a series, not a movie? Up. It's actually a movie. Oh, it's a nice. movie. Okay. okay. But well, it kind of, it seems like it just has that creepy thriller feel of this person who... Obsession. Know, yeah, this obsession feeling. Yeah. So that, that kind of... Uh, I don't mean to interject, but that sure. kind of uh, brought up a movie uh, that I saw last weekend. Um, it's called A Girl Walks Home Alone at Night, and Ooh. it's a... I want to see that. It's like an Israeli-Syrian um, okay. vampire movie. It's uh, shot in grayscale and black and white. Absolutely stunning. Subtitles? But, yeah, because uh, I think it's the first movie they've done in the vampire genre that's uh, entirely in Farsi. Ooh. So Ooh, interesting, um, but yeah, it's all subtitled immediately when it starts off. It hooks you within eight minutes. You see the same shot, but with different people and you see something going on in the background. It makes you go all the way to the very beginning of the movie. And it was there the whole time that you didn't even notice. Oh, it's oh, one of those movies. I love that yeah, so nice. yeah, uh, that's a, a girl walks home alone at night. Interesting. Yeah. So that that kind of triggered that in my head and I, I was an asshole and I had my phone out as you were talking I'm like uh huh uh huh I was like what the <laughs> yeah, fuck is the yeah. name of the movie I want to talk about this now so just like visually stunning yes cinema. It, it really looks like a beautiful movie so when Octo- is it coming out October 12th on Netflix that's awesome I, check the it out. kindergarten teacher with Maggie Gyllenhaal Neat. the <laughs> definitive article the the, the. What you got for us, me and Daddy? Oh, I got two movies uh, that I watched over the weekend very very different uh, one one way more enjoyable I'll start off with the one that it was it was enjoyable, it was good, it was well done. It's a Netflix movie, it's 1922. I haven't heard of that. And it's based on a Stephen King novel or maybe a short story. And it's a uh, well done. It's got great performances. It's just it is a very slow burn type thing and, and it, you know it just it it it, uh, it kind of doesn't go anywhere. The one about the dad and the kid? Yeah. Okay. Where it's, mm-hmm. and, okay. it, it, it says it in the trailer basically he kills his wife. You know, you oh, know, I have seen that trailer. Yeah, he kills his wife, and it's just, it, it's basically kind of um, like the telltale heart in the Midwest, mm. kind of, you know, that mm-hmm. kind of feel. So, and it does have a Poe feel to it, just that dark, sinister feel going on constantly. Just really good performances, really good performances, uh, good creep factor here and there. It is just a very slow burn kind of thing. So would that be like a Midwest gothic? I know, that's like, yeah, I guess it would be Ms. Like Scott open thing. fields, right? Oh, yeah, cornfields as far as you can oh, see. Oh, yeah, that yeah. is creepy, right? Can we call that a cornfield gothic? Nice. <laughs> a little more specific genre. It's like a fantasy... Corn uh... noir. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it! Nailed it! That's, that's it! That is amazing, absolutely. It's a corn noir. Corn noir. <laughs> points. Dude, uh, double points, that's, double points. There you go. That was two points. Amazing. Well you heard it there, done. right there. Uh, one one thing that's really great about the movie is the soundtrack because it's by Kaz's favorite singer Mike Patton. And really, so, yeah, I like him. Like, He's good. <laughs> he did that thing with Prince Paul where they did like the hip hop thing. It was tight. Uh, school for Handsome Boys, I think it's called a Handsome Boy Modeling School. There we go. Nicely done. Uh, nice nice points. But it's it's a, it's it's a slow burn. It's really well done. It's a period piece. It, is, it takes place in 1922 uh, with great soundtrack by Mike Patton. So it's just it's it's enjoyable. You just be have to be in that kind of mood. Rainy day, kind of just movie dark, or series. Sinister. What movie or series? Movie. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, just movie about okay. uh, an hour and forty. All right. Which I really like. Yeah. Because the fact that uh, Netflix is really pumping out these movies, but they're keeping them like an hour and a half. Yeah. You know, it's like there's so many two and a half hour movies where it's just like <laughs> you got to watch those at home because I mean, two and a half hours in a the theater. That's you know, that can get a little uh, testy on the testes. Yeah. Uh- <laughs> Netflix, <laughs> not in not in some theaters that have the uh, reclining chairs now. That, yeah. yeah, it makes it a little easier. But still, just uh, and then you have the Run to Pee app. That that I think is brilliant. Yeah, that is good. Wait, it's, what? It's an app that it, you put in what movie you're seeing, and it tells you where in the movie are the best times to pee and how long you have. Where like there's very not much happening, and it gives you a little synopsis, like and it gives you a little beep. You put your thing on uh, your phone on rever- on verb. It verbs. It tells you, okay, go pee right now. And while you're while you're going to pee, it says, okay, John is just talking to Sally about the divorce. Okay, okay. 80, and then you go 80, back 80 oh my god, of the theater leaves. I am so angry. I didn't think about that. <laughs> yeah, it's a what a idea. genius it's idea of things. Idea. Oh, it's called run to pee. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> Netflix strikes me as that kind of of uh, company who says, you know what? 
we are giving you this money, the entire production team, to produce. Just produce. Yeah. Just we trust you. Yeah. You if know? it takes you that long to tell a story, take that long to tell a story. <laughs> yeah. But it's it's enjoyable. It's called 1922. I give it about four and a half beard pulls. You know, that's good. Not, not great. But not, not, Mid level. You know, you know, production. Everything is great. It just it is a slow burn. You know, with some good scares in it, but just very slow. But the other movie that I really enjoyed uh, is uh, Tag. Tag. Oh my god, I've been that wanting movie to see is that. Freaking awesome! It looks that so movie fun. is so much fun. Yes. <laughs> so it's based on a true story. No, of a group of, yes. get out. Yeah, they even show the guys at the end. They show the guys at the end. That wow. It's a group of friends that have been playing the same game of tag for 30 years. And uh, and it's kept them together as friends. Because the whole motto of the film is you don't, get, uh, you don't uh, stop playing because you grow old. You grow old because you stop playing. Nice. And so it's what's kept them together is playing this game of tag. And so just basically about that and them getting together, What they since now they're older, they do it just for the month of May. From the month of May, the game of tag is on. But they don't meet anywhere. Just you could be at your job and all of a sudden here comes Brian running towards you out of nowhere that you haven't <laughs> oh seen all year. Oh, my God. Year. That's amazing. Or, or, yeah. or dress up in costumes or everything. Oh, and, yes. and the action sequences are like Marvel-level fight action sequences where it does the whole kind of thing like from the uh, – the first uh, Sherlock Holmes movie with uh, Rodney. Uh, Rodney? Who the fuck is Rodney? Rodney, Rodney, Rodney Downey Jr. <laughs> Rodney, Rodney, <laughs> Rodney I'm, Alan Rippey. No, uh, the, I like the glorious guy. RDJ. He's always funny. Uh, but uh, when he was Sherlock Holmes, it showed him like how he'd think. It's like, he will fate to the left. I will fate to the right. Mm-hmm. Hit him. It does things like that, but playing a game of tag. He's like, oh, okay, he's always weak at the right, so I'm going to jab nice. this way. Nice. Nice. And everything slows down into bullet time and shit. And uh, the ending it has an interesting choice at the ending. And it gets kind of heartfelt where you don't see that coming, and and so it, I it, I still I like what it did. It, it kind of I I was kind of iffy about whether I liked it or not. It does add to the warmth and the heart of it in a way, but it's just an odd choice. That's all I can say about it. Was it maudlin? Like was it no, trying no, no, to no, jank it, the no, it wasn't tears. No, it really face. wasn't. It really wasn't. It just it's just an interesting choice, and uh, and it's up to you to decide you know what you feel about. It. But overall. Regardless of that, it's just a fucking fun movie. Really great uh, uh, performances. Great. Uh, I mean, John Hamm, who's always good. Uh, Jeremy Renner. Jeremy Renner. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, I have. I'm so sorry. I have a great. I, I'm inter- I'm interjecting so much. I'm so sorry. But Jeremy Renner broke his fucking arms. He did during the production of that movie. Yeah, yes, both he of did. Them. Yep, yeah. both of them. Does it look like the he's guy in who a cast? plays Hawkeye? Yeah. in Marvel broke his arms doing a movie called Tag. Tag. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, oh, he, he was off, like, whatever. No, it's part stunts. of the job. They pull off some stunts. Yeah, like we tried to watch this weekend. We tried to watch uh, Action Point, the new Johnny Knoxville movie. Oh no! And what are oh you my doing? god, it's yeah, bad. Exactly. It was free. <laughs> well, and there's that. a lot of free shit. I loved every Jackass movie. I mean, they were just, you yep. sit there and you laugh your face off. Right. And that's all you're getting. Oh, my God. But, my dad would l- just laugh. Oh, that was like our bonding pain. thing. He'd in be like, he'd be like huh, I did that when I was a kid. Like, okay. <laughs> well, you should have filmed it. You'd be a lot richer. Yeah. You were an early Johnny Knoxville dad. Yeah. Sweet. <laughs> cool. Daddy Knoxville. <laughs> nice. nice. But uh, the movie tag, I highly, highly, highly recommend that. I'll give that six no. beard pulls uh, just wow. all day long. It's right. just, Fuck it's yeah. just a lot of fun. I haven't heard any negative from that movie. Yeah, it's just, it's just straight up fun. But it's just a great time. I don't think it did well in the theater. I don't though. think so either. I just I because don't think I people... tried to go see with my friend who's a very big Jeremy Renner fan, and we tried going one day. And she's like, "There's nothing afternoon. Like there was just no <laughs> sure. show times yeah. after." You can the see there's show. like three shows a week of it. And you're like, oh, damn. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't. But I just I, think positive the, stuff though about the whole thing. Yeah, and a great cast and everything. And yeah. uh, I just, I just, I don't think people knew how to take it. You know, I don't. I, maybe it wasn't uh, marketed correctly or something. I don't know. You know what? Some of the greatest movies didn't do well in the theaters. Yeah. There you go. Or, or who, who is it up against? Right. You know, did, right. Did, you know, when did it come out? Yeah, Black Panther. I think Black Panther came out right around oh. the same oh, time. Oh, well, so. then there you go. Screwed. Yeah. It's buried yeah. already. Right. Oh, yeah. Gone. But so that's what I got. And so there we go. That Hell there yeah. is our mini sode, including the little crossover with a UFO watch. Yes. With Kaz. With Kaz. with Kaz. with Kaz. The pause is important. And there's an appropriate length of so pause. It, it, it's, you hit it right there. Why didn't you do it again? That okay, was it's, good. It's UFO watch with Kaz. Too much. Yes. Too no, much. <laughs> was that too much? I thought that sounded really good. No? Wait, do it again. Yeah. I liked it. UFO watch. With Kaz. Perfect. That was great. That felt yeah. like the same Perfect. amount of time. <laughs> what end of to the stick are you on? What end of the stick are you on? I don't exactly. know. 
So that's why we're going to ask you what, I, what side of the sticker are you people on. Well, you need to find out, and the only way you're going to find out is by continuing listening to Fort Fritz. Find us, subscribe to us on YouTube, subscribe to us on iTunes, on Stitcher, on Libsyn. Uh, you can find us on Facebook. You can find us on Spreaker. Uh, Spreaker, you can find us on Spreaker. On Twitter, we're at Fort Fritz MCT. Facebook, just look for at Fort Fritz. And we're also on the iHeartRadio app, which is kind of unique and fun. Also, Spotify. Spotify, yeah. Oh, yeah, Spotify as well. And uh, can we tease something right now for tease. the people who are who have been listening to Teasers. Day One? Tease. Oh. Who likes to be teased? Teasers. Our season two finale and uh, people who have been listening since day one, they know that we like to take the month of October off. It's a religious holiday for me. We like to really end October with a bang. So we have a surprise in store. That's all I'm going to say. <gasps> Ooh. What, what is Stay it? Tuned. I don't know. What is it? I'll tell you later. You don't. You didn't tell him? No, I don't know what's going on. Oh, Jesus. I yeah. Did. Cool. I communication. I'm going to be excited maybe, about this. Maybe the announcement is better communication in the fort. There you go. That's a good announcement. You don't it- have to do this on air, man. <laughs> 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 All right. That is the mini-sode. Keep listening. And remember to check out the real full episodes. That's where we have storylines. We tell spooky stories and you have sound effects. Not just us talking like this about movies and crap like that. But thanks for listening. Keep on sharing. Keep on checking out Fort Fritz.